optimization problems of section 410, number 16, 22, and 34 in this video. This is our Stewart 5E calculus textbook. Find the point on the line 6x plus y equals 9 that is closest to the point negative 3, 1. This could be done with pre calculus. We know perpendicular lines have negative reciprocal slopes. You can figure out the slope through that point, find the intersect, and then find the distance. But it's a lot easier using calculus. And to give us a quick little picture of it, we solve for y. We got a downward slope line through a high intercept. We got a point over here. And my, my drawing is not to scale, but some perpendicular line here is going to minimize the distance. It has to be perpendicular. I don't know the name of this point, but I'm going to call it xy. And I see a triangle immediately. I see this triangle, which would fit in here. It would go from negative 3, 1 to xy. I want to optimize this. There's a distance here. And again, if I use variable z for the distance, I would call the vertical height here y minus 1. And I would call the horizontal run x plus 3. I have the Pythagorean theorem. z squared equals x plus 3 squared plus y minus 1 squared. But this is an optimization problem, not a related rate. So everything on the side, on one side, has to be in terms of one variable, so we can minimize or maximize. But I have this handy-dandy relationship between y and x. I want to replace y with negative 6x minus 9, even before I square it. X, 6x plus 3 squared plus negative 6x plus 9 minus 1 squared. Now, I am not going to square this out. This is a time when the chain rule is our friend. I could do the multiplication, but it's just as easy to do this. We're going to optimize this. And we should realize, if I'm going to optimize the distance, and I, if I'm going to minimize this distance, isn't this going to also be the minimum for z squared? The answer is yes. They're both minimums. So I'm just going to call z squared capital D, where D is equal to Z squared. So I'm minimizing. It will still minimize. It'll save me some work over here. So I get D prime, the derivative of the distance squared, is equal to 2 times X plus 3 times 1, right, plus 2 times negative 6X plus 8 times negative 6, the derivative of the inside. And this is a way easier equation to deal with now for simplification. And we know we want to optimize, so d prime is going to be 0. So 0 equals 2x plus 6. This is negative 12. So how about plus 72x minus 96? I get 0 equals 74x minus 90. So x is 90 74 or 45. 74 divided by 2, 37. And I just found the x coordinate of that point. So x is 45 37 And you could find this, but think about how ugly it would be doing the pre-calculus way. The perfect line deal with these fractions. Now y we know is just negative 6x plus 9. So it's just negative 6 times 45 over 37 plus 9. You get your y value. So we get the math, y is 6337, so the point that's closest by using optimization, the derivative to minimize it is right there. If you want to make sure it was a derivative, we can use our first derivative rule here and check it, but it is the minimum distance in that CM. All right, problem 22. Find the dimensions of the rectangle of the largest area that has its base on the x axis and the other two vertices above the x axis lying on the parabola y equals 8 minus x squared. I like a little sketch here. So I make a little sketch of the parabola, 8 minus x squared, shown in green. And then I sketch the rectangle with the vertices on the x-axis and the other two vertices on the parabola. Since it is symmetrical around the y-axis, the axis is similar to the parabola is there, I'm going to call this point out here xy. And I know that if I maximize this here, I will maximize the area of the whole rectangle. 
But that said, I can now look at this and say, all right, what is the area of this? Well, it's x over and y up. The area of that is simply x times y. And I want to maximize a. So I'm going to have to do the derivative of a, but I have to have it in terms of one variable. This time I have y equals this. So I will set area equal to x times 8 minus x squared. So the area of this rectangle, of that square, is 8x minus x cubed. Well, all right. I want to set a prime equal to 0. So I'll do the derivative here. a prime is equal to 8 minus 3x squared. We solve this, and I'm going to get 3x squared. 8 minus 3x squared equals 0, which leads to 3x squared equals 8, which leads to x squared equals 8 thirds. So x is equal to plus or minus the square root of 8 thirds. So we have now found the value of x on both sides of the axis. x is equal to the square root of 8 thirds. Now, if I keep this in exact notation, I'll do the positive first. We know that the top can become 2 square root of 2 over square root of 3. So I can write this as 2 square root of 6 over 3. That is the x value. All right, now that is the x. I need to find the y. I know y is equal to 8 minus x squared. So if I want to find the area, I need the x and y. Actually, I probably don't need to do that because I have the area in terms of x right here. They, they ask for the area of the dimension. Oh, they ask for the dimension. I do need the y. If they ask for the area. I can just do it right here and be done. They don't ask for that. So I need y equals 8 minus x squared. Well, x squared is over here. It's 8 thirds. So y is 8 minus 8 thirds. 24 thirds minus 8 thirds. I get y is 16 thirds. Now ask for the dimensions of the rectangle. Well, now we remember that y is the whole width, but x is only half of the length. So I need to double this. So the, the length of this thing is 2 times the x value. So 2 times 2 times square root of 6. So 4 square root of 6 over 3 by 16 thirds. It's the dimensions of the rectangle. And it's not given any dimensions, like inches or centimeters. That is the answer. All right, problem 34. I've already made a little sketch here. A 8-foot tall fence runs parallel to a tall building at a distance of 4 feet from the building. So here's an 8-foot fence. And parallel to the building, which I show the building there, okay, 4 feet away. I want the length of the shortest ladder that can reach from the ground over the fence to the wall of the building. Well, if I scale this down a little bit so we can actually do a little bit better, and I'll extend the ground out. I have to extend the building out in my picture, too. There is a place where it touches the 8-foot fence and gets to there. And they want to know the length of this ladder, which I will call capital length from one to the other. And they want that to be a minimum. What's the shortest ladder we have to have to make it up to the side of the building? We have to find the relationship here now. All right? And the relationship I see, and if I remove the word fence here, out of here so I can use this, is we're going to have similar triangles. We have a triangle here at the right angle, and we have a triangle here. So if I call the little triangle A and I call this distance x, big triangle, it's the building height, which is n x plus 4 on the distance, and this is the ladder length l. And they want to know what the shortest ladder is. They want to minimize that distance. So we have to make a relationship here. Well, the first thing I can do is I can set some similar triangles, and I'm going to find what I'll call little h of the building. Because I know the ratio is 8 over x would have to equal h over x plus 4. 
So h times x would equal 8x plus 32. We divide by x, h equals 8 plus 32 over x. So now I have a triangle here. I can write a relationship about it. If I plug in 8 plus 32h, I have a relationship there. I can write L squared is equal to h squared plus x plus 4 squared. And I can optimize. We know that if L is the length of the ladder, L squared is minimum, L squared will be a minimum. So I'll just call that little l for the length squared equals, and instead of h, I will put in 8 plus 32 over x, quantity squared plus x plus 4 squared. Well, to optimize, I have to take derivative, so I'll get l prime, bring it down 2 times 8 plus 32 over x, times the derivative of the inside, 0 for 8, but the derivative of 32 over x is negative. 32 over x squared. Then I can do the next one, plus 2 times x plus 4. Derivative of the inside of there is 1. So on this side, I, I can say, a little simplification, L prime is negative 64 over x squared times 8 plus 32 over x plus 2x plus 8. So I distribute the 2. And I'm going to have to set that equal to 0 here. So maybe I'll do one more step and distribute negative 64 over x squared and get L prime is equal to 2 carried 3, negative 5, 12 over x squared minus 32 times 64. So 32 times 64 is negative 20, 48 over x cubed plus 2x plus 8. And I can set this L prime equal to 0. And I can solve this then using my TI calculator. Using my calculator, I get x is 6.3490. That would be in feet because everything was in feet up above or four feet away from the building. So once you have that, to calculate the length of the ladder, we would simply have to put that number here back in here, realizing that little l is l squared. We're realizing that little l is l squared. If I do that calculation, I get L squared then equals the calculation I just had pop up on the screen, 277.1467. I'll take the square root of that. And I get the L of the ladder is 16.6478 feet. And I've optimized it for the shortest distance.